Okay, so here I am back with another action figure to unbox, and this is G.I. Joe Declassified, or the class, I forget, G.I. Joe Classified, Zartan, the evil master of disguise. Now, uh, Zartan is what I consider to be the best figure in the vintage line of G.I. Joe figures. Let's see how the classified version of Zartan stacks off. Let me get my handy dandy axe. Uh, I can't talk. My handy dandy exacto knife. Get ready to open this. It's got the same picture of every character in GI Joe at the back. <laughs> Not every character, but but a lot of them. Uh, Zartan's in here now. Uh, the beachhead figure that was absolutely impossible to find, is now selling on Amazon for like $300. Good job with your exclusives, Target. Good job with making sure everybody could get one of those. Gotta be ashamed of yourselves, Target. Uh, got Vipers and Alley Vipers, which I haven't seen yet. Uh, was that a... Yeah, it's Alley Vipers and uh, Firefly. And it almost looks like... I can't quite tell, but it was looking like it was an Iron Grenadier. They got a Trouble Bubble. They got a couple of Trouble Bubbles over here. Uh, maybe the, they'll release toys of those. Uh, some of the smaller vehicles, like... Uh, there's the Shark and uh, the Skyhawk. I'm doubting they'll release any larger vehicles in this scale, but maybe maybe something like that could get released. Anyway, let's go ahead and open him up. And it looks like that's going to be the best place to open it, is from the top. There we go. It's been a while since I opened one of these, because I can't find them anywhere. Finally got this one off of uh, Amazon for a decent price. Which is good, because like I said, Zartan's one of my favorite characters. And he has a unique backdrop in his box. Which, as you can see, has a Dreadnox logo. It's not quite the same Dreadnox logo as, as I'm used to seeing. It's got a, a Cobra sigil behind it. Which makes sense, because Cobra is behind the Dreadnox. And uh, you can see even the, the, the knife hilts at the top have like the same cobra head as like the classic cobra symbol and uh, a snake incorporated into the dreadnought logo which has a horn skull with eye markings similar to what Zartan has so that's pretty cool i like that that's uh they could have just you know put them with the regular cobra packaging and i don't think anybody would have minded but uh actually giving him a unique Dreadnought logo for the background. That was uh, that was a little bit above and beyond. So kudos to you, Hasbro, for doing that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little flemmy. There's some interesting accessories in here. Let's go ahead and try to get the accessories and the figure out without anything flying across the room. So, case in point, all this stuff is just so embedded in the package. I'm glad that they don't have any rubber bands or twist ties that I can see, because, you know, I hate those. But uh, but he's embedded so deeply in the package, I'm going to be worried about losing any of these. So the first thing I got out is his mask, which does not have any pupils. And uh, I want to say the original Zartan mask, as I remember it, had a beard. But this one just has kind of like a mustache and a little soul patch. I could almost buy this as being Roadblock if it weren't uh, Caucasian. And besides, the classified version of Roadblock has a full beard anyway. I don't know, it looks kind of vaguely like Stone Cold Steve Austin or something. Let me get the backpack out. There, got it out. So, uh, the backpack, as you can see, looks very similar to the backpack that the original Zartan came with. I think this is probably one of the more accurate to the vintage of the G.I. Joe Classified that I've seen. And his uh, blaster is, you know, a fairly decent replica, again, of the vintage toy. So, unlike 
you know, Cobra Commander, for example, who did not come with his vintage blaster, or, say, Snake Eyes, who didn't come with his uh, signature Uzi, they actually got that weapon for, for Zartan in here. One thing that I feel like is missing that would be good is a, a bow and arrow, you know, maybe like a quiver for him, because Zartan is supposed to be an, an expert archer, but... Oh well, he still has a lot of cool accessories anyway. So here's a knife, which looks like it has a little uh, finger guard there. I guess that's what that is. And then, uh, I'm not sure what these are. Let's see if I can just peel loose the tape and be able to take them out. It's like these, uh, it's a snake head? Snake head with like a little... Peg, so I'm guessing it pegs into something, but it's a, it's definitely a snake head. Don't know what it's there for yet, but hopefully I can figure it out. And then this just kind of gnarled, looks almost like a monkey's paw. Yeah, it's kind of like a monkey's paw with like a, I guess they're like supposed to be like magical artifacts or something. Zartan pushing himself as a wizard. Did it come with any kind of instruction sheet or anything like that? I don't see that it did. So I... I don't know exactly what those are or what they're for. Let's see. Let's open up his backpack. It doesn't flip open like the way that Zartan's backpack flipped open in the old toy. It comes apart into two pieces. So... I guess that's good, though, because uh, the way the hinge on the old one worked, it kind of, a lot of times, would wear out and break. So let's get Zartan out of... Ugh! Stuck in there real good! Alright, so, Zartan. Here we go. And it is a very nice-looking figure. And he's got, like, the same type of armor, like with the old Zartan had, with, uh, you know, kind of like a breastplate and uh, shoulder pads, and armor on the legs, which this seems to be permanently glued to his legs. Anybody who lost the original uh, leg armor on the Vintage Zartan like I did, uh, probably going to be grateful for that. And there's a lot more sort of surface detail to this figure than the original one had, obviously, because... Uh, you know, that's just how these classifieds are, adding a lot more sort of detail to the costuming and everything. There's a knife sheath on the back, so we can put his knife in there. That's pretty sweet. Hopefully it'll actually fit in there, unlike Snake Eyes. Yeah, there we go. That fits in there pretty well. And I notice there's some holes on his belt. There's one there. There's one here and one here. You see them? And uh, that's probably where these little doodads can go, since, like I said, they had little pegs on them. So I figured they pegged in somewhere, and it didn't quite go in, and it fell on the floor. <laughs> so we can we can put the monkey's paw and the snake head onto his belt, apparently. If I can find where that thing fell, but unfortunately it fell at a pile of stuff that I was keeping down there, so... It might be lost for a minute. Nope, I found it. There's like, you know, sandpaper and some other stuff I was keeping down there. It's mainly just craft stuff that I have over here in case I want to work on something. So, if I try to get a little bit of space in here where I can... Yeah, so, so you can stick the snake head and the monkey's paw onto his belt. So that's pretty cool. I don't know what the purpose of these are other than, you know, to give the flavor, some flavor to the figure. Like I said, Zartan tried to often pass himself off as some kind of wizard or something like that, so maybe he's got those on there to, you know, kind of, you know, play into the whole mystic illusion that he's putting out. The main difference between this one and the original Zartian figure, at least from a, an aesthetic standpoint that I can find besides the addition of some extra surface detail, is that 
the color scheme of the costume is much more dark and muted. Like, everything that's black, obviously, is still black. Anything that would have been, you know, silver or gray, or transparent in some cases even, is now black, or at least a very, very dark gray. And uh, the, anything that would have been that sort of burgundy color is now a very, very dark brown. The closest thing to burgundy is a scarf. So it might be fun if I can get another one of these at some point to uh, repaint all the dark brown stuff and make it more of a true burgundy. Let's see how well he can hold his weapons, because that's something that's always really important for G.I. Joe figures. So we'll get the uh, blaster into his hand. And it actually fits in there really well. It was easy to get it into his hand, and it seems to uh, grip nicely. And the, the trigger finger was really easy to get into the trigger guard. Yeah, there's a nice looking pose. So that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see if we can get his mask in there and see what he looks like with the mask on. Now the old one, uh, the hood of course was permanently attached and it kind of held the mask on. But it seems like you're supposed to take the hood off first on this one and then put the mask on. And hopefully it'll hold the whole thing together. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I was afraid since the face was much larger than the... The mask was much larger than the face. It might look kind of weirdly proportioned, but... No, it looks about right. I don't know what kind of disguise that's supposed to be, though. Because, I mean, like, with those solid white eyes, he looks about as creepy as, you know, you would expect Zartan to look. So... The Zartan's head sculpt is really good. Let's have a look at that. You know, I remember Larry Hama saying that he thought that, uh, like, like in his mind, he kind of was thinking of Marlon Brando when he was thinking of Zartan. And maybe the whoever sculpted this head thought of that, because he does look, I think, a little bit like Marlon Brando. Like, you may you maybe see it a little more in the profile. But yeah, he kind of reminds me of Marlon Brando like when he was in Apocalypse Now with the shaved head, you know? So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely really nice looking. So let's, uh, you can take this scarf off too. It just kind of, you know, pinches in the back. It's not even like a full scarf. So if you want to look a little more old school, you don't really need to have the scarf on there. I think it's a nice touch. It looks pretty good, so I'm probably going to leave it on there. But you don't have to if you want to go a little more old school, if you want him to be a little more like the original Zartan figure. It's up to you. So I'm going to set him down for just a second because I want to put the backpack back together. And this time, since I've already put the mask on, I'm going to put the mask into the backpack. Maybe, uh, maybe the, whatever Zartan makes his masks out of is kind of light sensitive, like the artificial skin in Dark Man. So he has to keep it in a case like this. I don't know. It's fun to speculate on, and the backpack goes on fairly well. Even though I think it's actually smaller in proportion than the original three and three quarter inch figure was, it somehow seems like it's bigger on his back, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's not badly proportioned, I don't think, but it does seem a little bit larger in proportion than the three and three quarter inch one. And I'm sure that I'm wrong about that. I'm sure that in actuality, you know, this is actually smaller on his back, especially like uh, in terms of the width of it like that. But, you know, it just kind of feels that way. So he does not have a holster to put his gun, nor does it seem like there's uh, any place. There's there's some pegs here on the side, and I'm not sure what's supposed to go on there. I haven't figured that out. There also, I notice, are some small holes in the backpack, and it looks like to me that the monkey's paw and 
Yeah, the monkey's paw will also plug in there. And I'm guessing the snake head also, since the peg holes are about the same size. So if you wanted to, you could also put them there. So they did give you a lot of good options on where to put these little doodads. And like I said, I'm not sure what the purpose of them is. It's probably just something to add some flavor to them. But I like it. I think it's fine. Uh, if you look at his belt buckle, it's going to be kind of hard to see, I'm sure. But he's got like a skull with ram's horns on it. So he's probably pals with Skeletor. I imagine, you know, Zodak and Skeletor. Zartan and Skeletor hanging out with each other. I got on that Masters of the Universe thing. Zartan and Skeletor hanging out with each other and exchanging tips on, like, you know, ram skulls and, you know, for their belt buckles and various types of hoods and, you know, uh, different breastplates that show off their abs. You know, him and him and Skeletor would have a lot in common, I think. They they'd probably be pretty good pals. So uh I'm not sure I'm not sure the armor seems to be a separate piece, but I don't see any kind of uh I don't see any kind of way to open it up. It looks like it's supposed to be permanently attached even though it's uh it is a separate piece that's not sculpted onto the torso. So uh, I don't think it's removable. I don't think it's intended to be removable. So, but I think that's pretty much it as far as Zartan goes. It'd be nice if he changed color in the sun, but that kind of plastic is like really expensive to make and probably more so than the toy companies would want to go for nowadays. Uh, great figure. They did a really good job with this one. This is probably one of the best classified figures that I've had so far. I really like that it keeps a little bit more of that vintage flavor than most of these usually do. It, it definitely seems like the vintage version of Zartan, but just kind of like turned up to 11, if that makes any sense. Oh, a snake is sticking out from this belt. Don't get too excited, Zartan. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a really good figure. Uh, the only thing I can think of, like I said, that that could make him better is if he had a holster for this gun. I think that would be uh, better. That would be a way to make this figure a little better. And uh, it would be nice to, like I said, maybe uh, get an extra one of these and repaint him to be more sort of old school colors. Or maybe Hasbro, if you're listening, that might be a good figure to put out for a store exclusive. Not like an important character like Beachhead that everybody's going to want to have in their collection and the the store that gets the exclusive makes it impossible to find because they don't want to make any money off of it. But, you know, something like a Zartan colored in, in G1 colors would be something that would be, you know, even if you don't get it, it's like, oh, well, it was just kind of a neat thing to have. But, you know, you still won't want to have it. So if that makes any sense. You need to re-release Beachhead. Hasbro, if you're listening, re-release Beachhead. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, like, subscribe, all that kind of good, fun stuff. And we will talk to you later. Bye.